Hey guys, Adiotorium here, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add custom keybinds in RPG Maker MV. This also works for RPG Maker MV, so if you're using RPG Maker MV, then don't hesitate to follow this tutorial. So, there are two methods to add custom keybinds in RPG Maker. The first one is through script call, and the second one is through editing the core script. We will take a look at these two methods in this video, so without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so if we go to the conditional branch, for tab and check the button condition here, you can see that we actually have some buttons or keys that we can use as a condition in a conditional statement. But as you can see here, the options are very limited. And to make it worse, all these buttons here already ha have their default use in your game. So for example, these down, left, right, and up buttons are, are already used as keys for movement, right? So you have to really consider before using one of these buttons as condition in a conditional statement and sadly until now until the very latest um, rpg maker engine there is still no inbuilt system to add custom keybinds in the engine in your project so that's why in this video we are going to discuss about the two methods that we can use to add custom keybinds in rpg maker okay so the first method is by using script call because we want to use script call we have to make an event we go to the event command, and in the third tab, you will find script. Click it, and write down input dot key mapper square bracket equals string. Write this down. Okay, let me explain this for a bit. Input dot key mapper is a function in your project score script that controls key binds. So essentially, what we are doing here is we want to add these new key binds into this function. And in order to do that, we will have to tell the function about the key code and the name of the key that we want to add. So in JavaScript, every key has its own key code. And since RPG Maker MV and MV runs in JavaScript, in order for them to recognize a new key, you will have to tell them the key code of that key, which will be stored inside this square bracket. As for this string here, it will contain the name of the key. So the name of the key is what will you will use to reference that key inside the engine. It can be anything, but I highly recommend you just stick to the name of the key. So for example, if you add the key B, then just write out the name B, or else it will confuse you in the future. Alright, for this example, let's add the key H. In order to do that, we'll have to add the key code and the name of the key into the input.keyMember function. First, the key code. How do we get the key code? There are tons of websites in, in the internet that you can use to find all key codes for all the keys in JavaScript. But I recommend uh, using this one website. The link will be in the description below. It's very simple to use. All you have to do is to press the key that you want to get the key code of. So in this example, we want to get the key code of H. So all I have to do is press the key H. And as you can see, we get the key code of H, which is 72. So we put the key code inside the square bracket, 72. And now all we have to do is to write down the name of the key. I will just stick to the name of the key, which is H. And there you go. And that's it. Click OK. And all you have to do now is to activate the event and your new custom key will be added to your game. So let's test it out. We give this an actor. And then we make another event with a parallel trigger. And here we go to the conditional branch for tap. And if we if we go to the button condition here and you click on the default one, you will see that the key that we just added are not here because it's not registered as a button condition. If you want to use the key that we just added, the custom key, you will have to use the script condition. So in here you will write input dot is and then the kind of trigger that you want if you go to the button here you will see that there are three types of trigger pressed triggered and repeated you can uh, pick one of these according to your likings but in this example i would just go with trigger and then you make parentheses and inside here you will write down the name of the key that you just added we just added the key h with the name H. So we write down H and that's basically it. Now all we have to do is just to 
give what will happen if the condition is met. So we'll just add some text. You just press H. Click OK. And let's test it out. Okay, so now I'm in the game and if I press H, nothing happened because the key has not yet been added. To add the key, then we must we must activate the event where we make the script to add the key. So this is the event, we interact with it, and now if I press H, the condition is met, which means the custom key has been added, as you can see. So yeah, that's it. If you want to make it automatic so that the player doesn't have to interact with an event to add the custom keys, you can use common event. So we will just copy this script. Go to common event. Let's make a common event called custom key. Set the trigger to parallel. And here we'll make a switch also called custom key. We paste the script and that's it. All you have to do is turn on the switch custom key and you're all set. Here we'll make a parallel event where it will turn on the switch custom key and then we can just make this an empty event. Oh wait, we should test it and here we'll make a parallel event where it will check the condition. Okay, this is it. So, if I press H, then this text saying H should appear. So let's test it out. Okay, now we are in the game and if I press H, then as you can see, it works. The condition is met because the, cus the custom key has been automatically added through the common event. Okay, the second method is by editing your project score script. This gives you the benefit of not having to set up the event to add your custom key. To do this, we will have to go to the games folder, just go to the game, open folder, and here we want to go to the GS folder, and this is the file that we are searching for. For RPG Maker MZ, it's RMMZ Core, and for RPG Maker MV, it's RMMV Core. I'm going to open it with uh, Visual Studio Code. You can open it with any IDE you have, but if you don't have any IDE, just use Notepad. Now, in this script, you want to go to the line 5598. This is where the input key member function will be located. Now, as you can see here, only the default buttons have been added into the input key mapper. That's why when we want to add custom keybinds, we will have to add it manually. But as you can see here too, the format remains the same. It starts with the key code and then followed by the name of the key. So it's actually very easy to add it. It's very simple. It's actually much more simpler than using the script call method. So for this example, let's add the key B. First, we want to find the key code for B. We go to the website and then press B. The key code for B is 66. So here we write 66, the key code of the B. And then we write down the name of the key, which is B. Give it a comma and that's it. Save the script. And if we return to our game and add another condition, this time with B, we change it to U press B. And now if I press B in my keyboard when I'm in game, then it should show the text U press B. Let's try it. Okay, now we are already in the game and if I press B, it works. See? This is because the custom key has been added into the key mapper. So we don't have to add it again through script. Um, just like when we use the script call method. And that's it. So yeah, those are the two methods that you can use to add custom keys in RPG Maker MZ and MV. If you have more efficient or a better method, then we will appreciate if you can share it with us. But I hope this will help you if you are searching for it. And yeah, that's for the tutorial. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.